Most FPL managers make the mistake of not looking at fixtures from a defensive perspective. They tend to look at generic fixture difficulty ratings or ones that are just based on attack. So in this video, you're going to gain an advantage over most FPL managers for the upcoming season. Kicking things off with Manchester City, not only do they have the best defence in the league, they've also got the best defensive fixtures out of all 20 teams. Based on that information, I'll probably have a City defender at the start of the season. I might even double up at the back. It just depends if there's two nailed defenders. Personally, I would prefer a nailed midfielder if that's the case. We'll just have to wait and see. Obviously, we might get leaked team news because they have got the first kickoff of game week one. Either way, it's very likely that I'm going to triple up. Brighton are in second place and you can see why. They've got the two easiest opening fixtures from a defensive perspective. They're the only team to have two dark green fixtures. It's not ideal that they've got difficult back-to-back -back fixtures in game weeks four and five, but there's more weighting applied to the earlier fixtures because we can't predict the future on availability of players or anything like that. And to be fair, this is an easy block of fixtures as a whole. There's three green fixtures there, two dark green, which is even better, and they've got four home matches in the first six. I did enjoy having Steele for just four mil last season. Obviously, it won't be like that this season. I will be looking at a stooping hand mostly. Palace have got the third best defensive fixtures. Yeah, they've only got two greens, but they have only got one red. Their easy fixtures are dark green, which is the best we can get from a defensive perspective, and at least they don't have any dark red fixtures. The game hasn't launched yet, so I'm not sure about the prices, but they would need to be quite cheap to get him a start in defence. I might even have one on the bench, we'll see about that. But to be fair, I do like to have three starting defenders for that nice high ceiling in attack, and I'm not sure if a Palace player will take one of those slots. Obviously, I've discussed City and Brighton, but I like to have attacking defenders, and that moves me on to the next team, which is Chelsea. If a player from Chelsea and Palace was guaranteed to play all six fixtures, then Chelsea have got an easier block of fixtures than Palace. But of course, there's more waiting on the earlier fixtures due to uncertainty, and they've got Liverpool first. Overall, two dark greens, one bright green and a red is actually easier than Brighton's fixtures, but we've got to wait till game week three for one of our players to not get injured or to bring one of them in. I don't like to book in transfers, especially if it's just for one game week because the fixtures are fine from game week two onwards. I'd rather just ride through that game week one fixture if I do pick a Chelsea defender. If he's fit to play, then I like Rhys James because of his attacking output. Out of all the defenders in the game, he's currently number one on my list. Obviously, it does depend on fitness and he could get injured before that easy fixture in game week three, but I'm willing to take that risk because I think he's worth it. It does make it easier for Chelsea that they've got four fixtures at Stamford Bridge in the first six. In fifth place is Everton. This is the team that I support, so I can give you a bit more insight. Just like I said about the other teams, these are easy fixtures because there's more greens and reds and they are dark greens, but I strongly advise you don't buy any Everton players, especially not in your first team, because our defence has been absolutely awful for the past couple of years. It's not like we've got any attacking defenders that offer enough attacking threat anyway. We'd have to have the absolute best defensive fixtures in the whole 20. Up next are the Gunners, and as you can see, these fixtures are starting to get more difficult as we move down the list. There's the same amount of reds as there is greens, but these are still easy fixtures because there's more waiting on the earlier fixtures. And there is a dark green there, but there's no dark reds. Whilst I wouldn't consider Everton defenders with better fixtures, Arsenal's defence is much better, so I will still consider Arsenal players. I just don't think any of them will be at the top of my shortlist. However, they do play at the Emirates four times in the six opening fixtures, and that does push them slightly up the shortlist. Gabriel's number one on my shortlist at the minute before the game launches. That's because of his attacking threat. He's slightly ahead of Zinchenko in the pecking order. That's because he's got more goal threat. And of course, defenders get double points for goals than they do for assists. Moving on to United, they've got really inconsistent fixtures and the first team to crop up with three red ones. Luckily enough, they've only got one extremely difficult fixture and they've still got three extremely easy fixtures all from a defensive perspective. But I think they'd have to be really easy fixtures for me to target that United defence. Luton have the best opening six fixtures out of all the promoted sides. It's just unfortunate that they have got a difficult fixture on the opening day. If you can get through that first match, then it's decent from there onwards. But personally, I won't be picking any Luton defenders. If you look at the rankings for the defensive quality, they're 20th out of all 20 teams. Spurs are just above average in ninth place. If you average out the fixtures, they're just about favourable, but they've got to travel away from home four times in the opening six. Whilst these fixtures aren't perfect, and neither is the Spurs' defence, I will be considering their wing-backs, which are Porro and Perisic. 
That's if they're listed as defenders in the game, and of course if they're available to play every single match. Liverpool have got average fixtures in 10th place. Yeah, you can say there's two greens and one red, but there are more green fixtures in the fixture difficulty ratings than reds anyway. These are definitely not bad fixtures, and Trent is right near the top of my shortlist for defenders. Of course, that's if he is listed as a defender, because he played as an out of position defender at the end of last season in midfield. But to be fair, for most of last season, he did play as a wing back, so I think they will class him as a defender. Just below average in 11th place of Villa, they've got a difficult opening fixture. They've got a dark red one as well. They've also got four away fixtures in the opening six, but to be fair, they've still got three green fixtures. So I don't think these are too bad and I'll still be considering Villa defenders. I say that because the defence was quite strong in the second half of last season, but obviously with these fixtures and the other options available, I don't think I'd pay more than 4.5 mil. Brentford are another team where I wouldn't pay more than 4.5 mil for one of their defenders. They've got a difficult fixture on the opening day. The fixtures don't get easy until game week three. It's beneficial that they've got four home fixtures in the first six, but I won't be giving them much consideration. Next to Sheffield United, they've got the easiest fixture of the promoted side. In fact, they've got the easiest two opening fixtures of the promoted side, but look how difficult it gets from there. They've got a dark red and then two reds as well after the green. They're another team with four home fixtures, but they're buggered after game week two. And to be fair, they've got one of the worst defences in the league until they do prove themselves. So I definitely swerve them. West Ham are another team that I'd stay away from. Yeah, the first four aren't too bad. And that Luton fixture is very favourable. But if you look at the next two after that, they're both dark reds against City and Liverpool. It's not worth it. It makes it even worse that four of these fixtures are away fixtures. I know I'm flying through the teams that we should avoid, but in 19th place is a team that most people will consider. Anyway, in 15th place is Burnley, and they've got the most difficult opening fixture that you could ask for against Manchester City, but to be fair in the second match at least they play Luton. Whilst I think their defence will hold up better than Sheffield United and Luton's, and they've got four home fixtures here, I really don't think it's worth targeting them. They'd have to prove themselves in the Premier League in defence, I just don't think it's worth it even if they're really cheap. Forest are the only other team with a dark red fixture on the opening day. Yeah, they get a dark green after that, but then they've got another two reds coming up as well, and four of these fixtures are away from home. They were poor at the back last season, and that gives us another reason to avoid them. Wolves are another team where they've got four away fixtures in the first block of six, and they're the only team to open up with two difficult fixtures. In recent years, Wolves have been alright at the back, but with these fixtures, they're not worth considering for now. Fulham are the last team on the list to have four away fixtures in the opening six, and they've got two dark reds before they even get to a green in game week five. As we know, Fulham's defenders will be reasonably priced. We could wait until game week five to bring one of them in. I just don't think it's worth making those transfers in defence. I'd rather make them in attack. And if I was to make those transfers in defence, I really don't think it would be on a Fulham defender. Penultimately, in 19th place in Newcastle, they've got three red in the first opening four, and one of them's a dark red. These are really difficult fixtures, but I think a lot of casual FPL players will just look at Newcastle's defence last season and last season's prices because they will go up in price. Then they'll also look at that game week one fixture and not much further than that and just automatically bring in Newcastle defenders. Whilst they have got a strong defence and Trippier's got a high attacking output for a defender, I think they're worth avoiding until game week five. Of course, you can wait until game week six when there's an easy fixture, but I don't mind including average fixtures in a fixture run. The best bit about bringing them in after game week four is that there's three red fixtures out of the way and they've got all the green fixtures left up until game week 19. Bournemouth have the worst set of fixtures out of all 20 Premier League teams. They've not got any greens whatsoever. They've got three reds, including a dark red. Not only that, they have got a poor quality of defence as well. If you've made it to this point in the video, you might as well subscribe because you've clearly found it informative. Make sure you take a screenshot of the defensive fixture difficulty ratings on screen because it will help you in game week one. And I've published a video on the best attacking fixtures. Make sure you watch that if you haven't already.